one of the trends that impresses me, the progress isn't really fast, uh, but it is improving, and that is the improvement in birth weight of piglets. We've increased litter size, which of course reduced uh, birth weights. And we know that about 50% of the mortality that takes place in a litter occurs amongst pigs that weigh less than one and three quarter pounds, 50%. And at the other end of the scale, only 5% of the mortality occurs in pigs that weigh over 2.2 pounds. So anything we can do to improve the birth weight of piglets is going to be very, very positive for us. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Bed Podcast, where we explore the science behind nutrition. I'm your host, Jorge Estrada, and today in our podcast, we have a very special guest, Dr. John Patience, who is a professor emeritus of animal sciences at the university, uh, at the Iowa State University. Today, we'll be discussing the trends over the past decade in feed uh, and managing the wind pigs, right? So, Dr. Patience, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining us today. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I, it's a real honor for me to be here today, and I look forward to our conversation. Awesome. And then I wouldn't do your background justice by trying to summarize it myself. So you're a well-known professor um, with extensive experience in both industry and academia. Would you mind providing a brief summary of, uh, to our audience? Sure. And, I, uh, and I'll keep it brief because it deserves to be brief. Uh, but it is nice. I, I'm really pleased uh, that I had a career that took me uh, into extension position, uh, working in the feed industry. I was involved in research administration when I was at Prairie Swine Center in Canada, and I was involved in a faculty position at Iowa State University, uh, doing things that faculty do, such as training of graduate students and extension work and so on. So, um, I pretty much worked my whole life uh, in pigs. Uh, I grew up on a farm that uh, ultimately became 100% pigs, and as well as cropping, and so uh, um, I, that I work. It works out to about 46 years that I've worked in the, in the pig business after graduation. Have you considered adding cheese to your feed? Let us help. Keys Manufacturing is a family-owned and operated business, conveniently located in central Illinois. We have been producing Pro 88 cheese powder since 1997. Pro 88 is a high-quality source of protein and milk fat. Our cheese powder is research-proven to contribute to a smooth transition in early weaning pigs, being highly palatable, increasing feed intake, as well as delivering easily digestible nutrients. Check us out at keysmanufacturing.com for more information and links to our research. We look forward to helping you maximize your feed. So today we're not gonna we're, we're not gonna go over the 46 years, but we're gonna go over the past decade, right? So we're gonna go over the last 10 years, and I think that will give us plenty to talk about. And it's good to have somebody like you that you know you you have experience from different people, from different systems, different you know uh, backgrounds. That is good. You're gonna share some of those insights with us today. So. Managing the winning peak, right, is, is such a challenging period. And, you know, you have peak quality, you have health, you have environment, nutrition. Where to start, right? So overall, have we made improvements? For sure. Uh, we've made, uh, uh, obviously, we've made significant improvements. We've made improvements in housing. We've made improvements in the nutrition of pigs, the genetics, uh, um, and in, in health care. Uh, disease continues to be a really uh, serious challenge for us. And I just, because a number of my comments are going to relate to uh, nutrition and disease, uh, I just want to share very briefly some information uh, with you. Um, uh, Alyssa Cornelison was a master's student of mine, and she compared uh, three barns with three different disease uh, challenges. And the two lower challenge barns, three little over 3% mortality and the other was a little under 8% mortality. And in a 2,500 head barn, um, that increase in disease, uh, which was PERS and influenza, reduced net income in a 2,500 head barn one turn by $28,000 or worked out to $11.50 lost per big place. So obviously disease and being able to 
minimize disease or keep disease out of the barn is a huge issue. It was 10 years ago, and it still is today. But there's lots of positive trends that are going on. Uh, one of the trends that impresses me, the progress isn't really fast, uh, but it is improving, and that is the improvement in birth weight of piglets. We've increased litter size, which of course reduced uh, birth weights. And we know that about 50% of the mortality that takes place in a litter occurs amongst pigs that weigh less than one and three quarter pounds, 50%. And at the other end of the scale, only 5% of the mortality occurs in pigs that weigh over 2.2 pounds. So anything we can do to improve the birth weight of piglets is going to be very, very positive for us. And kind of in a similar fashion, um, uh, the industry is moving to a, a slightly older weaning age. We used to be running 19 to 20, 21 days, and now we're moving more to 24 days uh, weaning age. And we know this is going to be beneficial in many, many respects. But there's one aspect of moving to an older weaning age that I, I just want to share because sometimes I think the data are misunderstood. And what I'm referring to here is the uh, uh, the, the, the statement that increasing weaning age reduces the variability in piglet uh, weaning weights. And that is, I, at least in any of the studies that I've seen, is in fact actually not the case. If we look at coefficient of variation, absolutely. Every study I've seen, CV goes down, and one study I'm looking at right now, they went from 18 days of age to 21 days of age, and the CV went from 14.4 to 12.9. That's a, in the measurement of variation, that's a, that's a big improvement. But the problem is the actual variation didn't change. It was the average weaning weight that changed. And of course, if we wean pigs older, they're going to be heavier. And we calculate CV uh, as CV... Uh, as, excuse me, standard deviation divided by the average weight. So we can hold standard deviation the same, increase weaning weight, and it looks like we reduced variability and we haven't. So I ask people to just keep that in the back of their minds because that is a, is a concern. Um, um, but we also know that for every increase in weaning age, on average, and this varies from experiment to experiment, but the weight of pigs sold at market weight at a constant time will increase by about a pound and a half. And that's pretty darn significant improvement. We also know it's going to reduce um, weaning age goes down, that we're going to probably use less antibiotics. Uh, the, GI, the gastrointestinal tract of the pig is going to be improved. The immune system is going to be better developed. And the pig's just more tolerant. We don't have to be as absolutely perfect in everything we do uh, to get good performance. They're a little more forgiving, if I can say it that way. Um, so, but the one issue that will not go away, and it's been there for a long, long time, and that is getting the pigs on to feed at the time of, of weaning. And we know from some data, especially from Europe, that some pigs don't eat at all until 24 or six up to 60 hours after weaning. And that's, um, that's kind of scary. And especially if you think that we're on a, a nursery feed budget of seven to 10 days on phase one, some of those pigs that don't get on to feed very quickly, they're hardly going to get any phase one feed before they're made, moved on to phase two. And yet those are the very pigs that need to have that phase one diet. And that's why we like to see, and I, I think many people do this, sort their pigs, not sort the whole barn, but just take the smaller pigs when you're loading the barn and putting them into four, five, six pans, and they get a little bit better feed budget than the rest of the barn does, uh, so that we know those pigs get that phase one uh, uh, diet. Um, in appropriate amounts to get them off to a good start. So there's some of the trends. Um, I've got some more here, but those are some of the trends uh, that I've seen in the last little while. Oh, that, that's awesome. And, and as you're saying, right, I mean, health is the king, right? I mean, a good health, good start, that, that will help quite a bit. And that's almost impossible to replace, as, as you were saying earlier. 
that uh, birth weight variation for sure you know some of the things that you mentioned there um, and also you know how the wind age could be deceiving from the start standpoint of the variation of the weight at winning so doctor patients um, thank you very much for joining us today oh it was my pleasure so everyone thanks for listening to the swine nutrition black bell podcast don't forget to subscribe and leave us some comments join us in our next episode